This is Rick, and welcome to Astral Club. This is five reasons why you can't astral project. Before we get into it, Patreon. If you'd like to support the work of Astral Club, you can do so on Patreon. When you join, you get advanced commercial-free episodes on Sunday, a library of downloaded episodes for your podcast app, and a Patreon email where we can talk back and forth. And uh, if you're interested, you'll find a link in the description. Next up, private lessons. If you'd like a uh, lesson with me to Astral Project, where we can concentrate on your level, your areas of interest, answer your particular questions without worrying that I'm not entertaining everyone else, uh, you can certainly uh, f- send me an email. And you'll find that email in the description. Okay. There's always a lot of different reasons why your astral projection just doesn't work, just doesn't last, you just can't get out of your body, you just can't initiate a projection. But I'm going to talk about the five biggest ones, and these come from a book which uh, I bought back in 1982 for $6.95 called Astral Travel. Your Guide to the Secrets of -of Out-of-the-Body Experiences by Gavin and Yvonne Frost. I want to caution everyone, however. If you are new to astral projection, don't buy this book. Because whereas there are some pearls of wisdom in here, there's also a lot of inaccuracies. It's also very pagan and Wiccan-oriented. So I just, I mean... If you're not into that especially, you don't need this book. Now, if you're an experienced projector and you want to give it a shot, I mean, I think it's selling for $21.95 now on Amazon, uh, you can certainly do so. You will find some very good points in the book. However, you'll also find out there's a lot of inaccuracies. But if you're an experienced projector, that won't be a problem because you'll identify immediately what's BS and what's factual. At any rate, this particular area is uh, is perfectly fine. And I want to discuss, and I'll certainly add my own uh, opinion of of each one of these uh, particular reasons why people are having trouble astral projecting. First up is fear. Now, we have discussed that in the past. It's probably the single biggest reason why your astral projection fails, doesn't happen, or is cut short. All that is required to jeopardize your projection is the emotion of fear. There is an automated defense system that is monitored through your astral cord. If strong emotion, most particularly fear, is experienced either before, during, or right at the end of your astral projection, it will pull you back because it senses this fear and it takes it as a possible threat and will pull you back. If you have that fear cropping up immediately, a lot of people report experiencing fear when they get into the vibratory stage. Sometimes they're, they start feeling fear, their heart rate increases. And the problem with that is when your heart rate increases, what happens is your body starts to come awake, either gradually or suddenly, because it's leaving its uh, sleeping state, uh, where the heart is generally beating at a slower rate. But fear, causes adrenaline to be excreted into your system, which then stimulates your heart, which then eventually wakes you up. So fear is our enemy all through the astral projection process. How do you deal with that fear? Well, it's different for all of us. I think, as I've said in the past, the best way to deal with it is to inform yourself. Fear 
is really a teeny little animal. I remember there was this Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, show, and they had this one particular episode where Buffy, who was the titular character, she fought and killed vampires, and she uh, encountered this this demon, and uh, it, it, it was a fear demon, and it supposedly had all this power to frighten people and caused a lot of havoc until eventually they discovered where the demon was and they they found out it was six inches tall. So, uh, you know, Buffy just squished it with her foot. (laughs) So what that says is that whereas in the darkness, our fear can seem like a giant, in the light of day, when you can actually examine fear close up, you'll find that it's a little insignificant bug that can be easily squashed. So fear is your number one obstacle to astral projection. And like I said, I believe that knowledge, listening to podcasts like this, watching videos, reading good astral projection books, this will bring you knowledge and knowledge gets rid of ignorant fear. And that's why it's important to educate yourself in astral projection. Number two, health. If you're in poor health, it's going to interfere with your ability to astral project. If you want to astral project, you'll have to improve your health. Let me give you a very common example. If you're in bed suffering from a head cold and your sinuses and everything is all blocked up and you're sitting there struggling to breathe, uh, you know, maybe sitting up in bed because if you're lying down, you can't even breathe properly. You're not going to do a lot of astral projecting, not in that state. Uh, When you have this strong sensation that you can't breathe, but chances are you may have difficulty even falling asleep for any length of time. Uh, and certainly if you can't breathe, your body is not going to allow your astral self to go wandering about the astral planes. It's going to be like, no, no, you want to stay right here, buddy, because we need your help just keeping this physical body going because of uh, this whole respiratory system is all messed up right now. So you got to get yourself in good health, eat better, uh, do some exercise and uh, and take care of yourself. If you're attracted to taking vitamins, that's fine. But, you know, you have to make sure that uh, a, a good diet and, and just taking care of yourself, getting the right amount of rest, all of that will help you to stay healthy and keep you away from all of the nasty diseases that will interfere with your ability to astral project. Number three, electrical fields. This is something that's very interesting. I know I told the story once that I was flying too close to an electrical substation and there was this, uh, I guess it must have been extremely magnetic because it was electromagnetic uh, area of this electrical substation. I got too close to it and uh, I got trapped. Now, this was in my early days of astral projection, so I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do. Today, I would probably just raise my vibratory level or I would, um, I'd, I'd zoom in on, on an ident somewhere and that would free me. But back then, I just didn't know what to do. I panicked and eventually I got pulled back into my body. But I've also experienced electrical fields that have been in my own house in my homes and I've learned to uh, avoid certain areas uh, of the the walls and and the house where there's electromagnetic fields. Now the funny thing here in this book uh, they mention that if you're experiencing an electromagnetic field turn the power off in your house. (laughs) I just I'm like wow that's that's a pretty extreme uh way to uh, to deal with your inability to project. Uh, okay, sure, turn off the power and 
you won't have any air conditioning or heating and and you you know it, you might have some problems turning on the lights but what about your refrigerator <laughs> what have you you're just gonna leave your your power off every night and allow your your stuff to uh to thaw out and and to get warm uh i don't, I don't think that's a good idea I, I think that's one of the dangers of this book they tend to go way overboard in certain areas and uh Turning off the power in your house is stupid. But what you want to do is you want to, you can get a hold of electromagnetic meters and you can locate hotspots in your house, which you can then work to avoid when you project. And that's a lot easier than turning off your power every night, especially if you live with other people or you live with a wife or girlfriend or whatever, um, or husband. I don't know if they'd be down with that whole, okay, it's time to turn off the power so I can project tonight. They also mentioned staying away from metal jewelry uh, because uh, they also have little electromagnetic fields. And I have noticed, I mean, for instance, I don't wear any jewelry. I'd never have any metal on my person. And that's been since I was a kid. I don't even wear a wedding ring. Uh, because I can't stand it. Uh, not only is it the weird pressure sensation, even a wristwatch, it, it bothered me. I was constantly aware of it. And uh, there's these electrical fields, which I'm a little bit more sensitive to when I do a lot of projecting. And it was just very uncomfortable. So I myself, a long time ago, even as a kid, decided no metal near me. Now, you may like jewelry and what have you, but what I suggest is take off your jewelry when you go to bed. Put it right there on your nightstand. It's not going to go anywhere, especially if you've ever had problems. I mean, I've heard stories of people who projected and they found that their astral body was stuck to their physical by a finger which had a wedding ring on it, for instance. Uh so that's something that you don't want. So if you're having problems in that area, you might want to consider taking off your jewelry before you go to bed. Number four, timing. Timing can be everything in astral projection. Now we're all different. So it's hard for me to give you a hard and fast rule because we're all very different people in astral projection can manifest in a number of different ways that might work for you that wouldn't necessarily work for me. What I suggest is experimentation. If you have a successful or when you have a successful astral projection, note the time of day, how long you had been sleeping, what the temperature of the room is. Did you have on a lot of covers? A few covers, only one cover, no covers. Uh, I'm, I'm big on sleeping without covers, but I know a lot of people can't do that. Um, you know, I just surround myself in a bubble of warm energy and I can sleep through the night even in the winter with the heat off. But I know a lot of people can't do that. But be aware of all that. Be aware of the phases of the moon so that when you look back at your notebook, you could say, okay, you know, I tend to project more when the room is a little bit on the colder side, when the moon is waxing very close to full, very light covers. Uh, I only, uh, last time I ate was three hours ago, let's say. If you have all that stuff written down in your notebook, and, and you know, and it doesn't take a long time to do that. Uh, you can jot that information down in a couple of minutes and it can help you to discover what works for you. Uh, for example, I mean, I could ask to project during any particular period of the moon, but I've noticed that when it gets close to the full moon, I have a much higher success rate in projection because there's something about the moon that pulls at me. Uh, you know, if you ever run into a dry spell at night, try taking uh, some naps. You know, if you have that luxury on the weekends or whenever that's available to you, that can perhaps provide you another outlet for your astral projection energies. Uh, one good thing about naps are 
If you're the kind of person who goes to bed dead tired and falls immediately into a deep sleep, a nap can be uh, a godsend for you because, yeah, you might be a little tired because it's just a, you know, but it's a two o'clock nap, let's say, in the afternoon. So chances are you're not dead tired. So you'd be able to more easily control the process of uh, rising from the sleep state and entering the astral projection state. Lastly, number five is clock, calendar, and telephone. This part here is particularly a little charming because it harkens back to the days in the early 80s when the clock, calendar, and telephone were three different things. Now, of course, the almighty mobile phone has everything you could possibly need or want inside it there somewhere in an app. In this particular section, uh, they advised that, you know, if you're having problems projecting, that you should get away from, you know, the clock, the calendar, the telephone, and go somewhere where you can take a holiday and, and leave all that behind. Now, that's a perfectly good piece of advice if you're having problem astral projecting. However, things have changed quite a bit since 1982. When we walked around in 1982, if we wanted to make a phone call, we had to go inside our house or room or apartment uh, or go to a phone booth. Uh, you Gen Zs probably don't even know what that is. But, you know, we had to go inside somewhere and, and to make a phone call. Uh, so it was a lot easier to get away from uh, the outside world. Today, though... If you stop anybody on the street, whether they're 80 years old or whether they're eight years old, they're going to have a phone on them because nowadays mobile phones are everywhere. Uh, you, you, you literally can't get away from them. And nowadays they've improved their level of service. So you know, many times you can get a signal even somewhere uh, in the woods which in the earlier days of cell phones was unheard of. The minute you got out of, you know, the, uh, the basic cities, you lost signals pretty darn quick. But, you know, there is something to be said for that whole disconnection from the busy day world. Because if there is one device that encapsulates our modern, busy world, it's the mobile phone. It literally, you're carrying your burdens with you wherever you go. Yes, it's extremely handy in that, uh, you know, wherever you go, you can get a hold of your friends and family and whatever. But, you know, it also kind of prevents you from getting centered, you know, with nature and to get peaceful and to put yourself into a state of being apart from all the distractions of daily life so that you can get in touch with your spiritual self and begin to astral project or to continue to astral project. So these are the five interesting uh, ways that cause failure and prevent you from having successful astral projections. So, uh, you know, pay attention. And perhaps one of these five things, or all five of them, if you address them, it'll remove the last impediment to successful astral projection. Well, I hope that was beneficial to you. If it was, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, questions and comments, uh, do you find any of these areas as impediments to your uh, astral projections? Uh, or perhaps, no, you, you, you don't believe that one or all of these things have anything to do with astral projection. Then, Lynn, tell me about that. Tell me about your experiences with these things and why you've either succeeded or failed, perhaps based on these or other reasons. Uh, this is Rick, and I will see you on the astral plane.